Let's take a quick look at a simplified depiction of mental functioning, a blueprint of how our minds work at a task, including input, filtering, and function. First, there are many competing inputs. Noise, lighting, distractions, sounds, other people, information, smells, temperature, and so on. These inputs are things that are in our immediate environment. We know them through our senses. Next is how we attempt to filter all those inputs so that we use only the information we need to achieve our desired task. This filter is our attention, and it has two interactive parts. One is our conscious workspace, the here and now where we break down selected data. The conscious workspace can cause us to take direct actions, moving our hands and feet, directing our eyes, or perhaps prompting us to speak. But the conscious workspace also has constant back and forth interaction with our long-term memory or knowledge base. This is where we have stored all our past experiences, and some of them may relate to or inform the current conscious workspace. An important difference between the conscious workspace and long-term memory is that the capacity of the conscious workspace is severely limited. When you look up a phone number and keep it in mind until you dial it, you're using the conscious workspace. But the conscious workspace has a time span of less than two seconds One Mississippi, two Mississippi. before it needs to be refreshed as new bits of information or thoughts displace older items of information. Think of it as a leaky bucket. After NASA's loss of the Columbia Space Shuttle in 2003, organizational complacency received a lot of attention. Because NASA had many successes in a pioneering field, it had acquired a sense of smugness substituting for knowledge. Maybe your organization isn't NASA, but if you think avoidance of failure or lack of customer complaints is the definition of success, then your organization may be complacent. And if your management and senior staff consider themselves to be experts, ignoring the comments, suggestions and advice of the rank and file employee, your organization may be inviting risk. Even if you are not in a management position, it's good to have an understanding of organizational complacency so that you can recognize it, point it out, and perhaps become part of the solution in eliminating it. What are the root causes of organizational complacency?